Um, the communities that uh, we saw in Zambia um, uh, obviously have got very different challenges to what we have here in the UK, but in a way that they are the same. They're, they're, they're people and they want to be happy and healthy and it was, it was really interesting to see that contrast. When we turn the tap on in this country, we take it for granted the quality of the water and the fact that it's actually going to be there. From what we've seen in Zambia, that's totally not the case. And the water is, it's dirty water and it was referred to as dead water. And they really don't have a choice. It was a very emotional experience and it was fantastic to meet the families and really get to kind of talk to them. For example, we saw one lady called Precious and she's a mother of three and we were collecting water with her and it was dirty water and then she was going to give that to her children. And that was quite emotional to know that she has to make that choice every day. They went down to, to the river and basically used a cup to dig down into the sand and then take the water from there so that it was as clean as it possibly could be. Um, but obviously that took quite a bit of time, which I didn't appreciate before I went there, um, that actually collecting water isn't just about kind of sticking a bucket in the water. Um, so it does take them a lot of time and obviously they've got that travel time back to their community as well uh, with a very heavy load. I mean 20 kilos, which is the equivalent of a, of a kind of suitcase when you go on holiday, um, is what they have to carry and if they're walking for four or five kilometres every day um, that it takes its toll. Yeah I mean I actually tried to do this and I carried it for about 500 yards and it's really tiring it's a lot more tiring than what it is. Mm. We helped build the trains um, badly maybe but we we tried anyway um, we got involved in building the roofs with the help it has to be said from the locals and stuff they were a lot more experienced than what we were but yeah we traded it and we got in we got it a little bit dirty and it was greatly appreciated by the people out there we um, spent the day with the family there and we cooked with them so um, we cooked shima from the from the maize that we um, that we had and pounded the the corn as well for their meal later that day um, and and cooked the okra as well so it was it was quite it was quite nice to spend the day you know, and, and the time with that family and doing those daily chores. We visited a school when we were in Zambia, um, Chiabola, and it was fantastic to see the difference in that school since Water Aid have, have been in to, to help them. Uh, they've now got a, a water pump really close by and latrines, and there's been a 90% increase in the number of, of children who can actually attend that school now because they're, they're healthier um, and they're able to, to spend time in, in their education rather than collecting water. I'm a keen amateur photographer as well, so when we went there, I was very interested to see the subjects and see what, and looking at it from my from that point of view. To see the schools after they've had post intervention from Water Aid, you could see the faces were smiley, um, big, bright, clean, healthy kids, and it really made a difference. And it was just really interesting in context between the two. In this country, we have a choice. Uh, we have access to water, clean water, all of the time, and take that for granted. Whereas in somewhere like Zambia, they don't have a choice. Um, often their water is dirty um, or they don't have access to it at all. And they, no one should have to make the decision between dying of thirst or dying from dirty water.